Hey everybody, welcome back. This week is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about film developing. Now I've been developing black and white film at home for a few years now, kind of off and on. I wouldn't call myself an expert at it by any means, but I've figured out a technique that works for me and, and gives me pretty good results. Now, a little while back, um, I purchased a five pack of Fuji Acros 100. And uh, it's this beautiful black and white film. I heard so many great things about it that it was fine grained and finely detailed. And I wanted to try it myself. Well, shortly after I picked this up, they ended up discontinuing uh, Acros, uh, Fuji did. And so my five pack became very uh, valuable, very sort of somewhat rare. And I was worried about shooting it and finding the right subject and all that sort of thing. So it sat in my fridge for a while. Now, Fuji has since developed a new formulation of Acros. So it's not so, I'm not so concerned about uh, shooting this and, and never having any more Acros left in the world or anything like that. Um, so I figured yeah, I had it in my fridge and I left it in there for just the right opportunity and I realized at a certain point that what's the point of having it if I don't use it. So uh, a couple weeks ago I ended up taking out a roll of it with my Yashica Mat 124G which is a twin lens reflex camera and just walked around this park that we have here uh, near Denver called Rocky Mountain Arsenal and just shot a roll just to kind of see see how it would turn out. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show my development process and record it for posterity. Uh, this is by no means really a tutorial. Uh, this is kind of what works for me. It may not work for you. I am using some expired chemicals, so don't stress out too much about that. But I found that I have found that uh, black and white developing is actually pretty pretty accommodating to errors so if you don't develop it for just the right amount of time or fix it for just the right amount of time or your developers expired like mine is the results still end up pretty good so I'm gonna take you along my development process and hopefully it'll be a nice chill way to spend a few minutes and hopefully get something out of it so let's take a look today we're gonna be developing my first ever roll of Fuji Acros 100 I keep all my film developing tools in this uh, tote, cleverly labeled film developing kit so people don't think it is a bomb making kit. In here I've got all the accoutrements I need. These are the three chemicals I use for my process. Kodak HC110 black and white developer, photographer's formulary TF4 fixer, and Kodak Photo Flow. I use a couple of graduated cylinders, a light proof collapsible container, and the film tank, as well as a funnel. I pour the nasty HC110 concentrate into a little uh, syringe I got from Walgreens uh, for dispersing medication. Dump that into the specified amount of water for my dilution, which is dilution B. Stir it up. And then I'll usually place the graduated cylinder of the developer into a tub of ice to bring it down to temperature. In the meantime, I'll spool the roll of film onto the film reel. This one has been adjusted. Uh, it works for both 35 millimeter and 120. This is the film itself. And I put all these goodies into a changing bag that allows me to spool the film onto the reel uh, in daylight. This part of the process is what gives me uh, what is known as the film sweats. 120 medium format film, which I'm doing here, is a little bit different than 35 millimeter in that I don't need a bottle opener or scissors to pry open the 35 millimeter cartridge and, and clip the header and all that good stuff. You basically just need to uh, unspool the 120 film discard the backing paper and then feed it onto the reel. And after much gnashing of teeth and praying to the film gods you were rewarded with... Yeah! A fully spooled film. Now be sure to hold on to the spool from your old film because you're going to use this to reload uh, the camera next time. Now I use an app called Massive Dev Chart that gives me 
the times and dilutions for all different kinds of films and all different kinds of developers, as well as it has a timer that allows me to time each step of the process. I start with a pre-soak, which is an optional step that uh, I soak the film in water that's the same temperature as the developer I'm going to be using. That helps to remove some of the coating that's on the film to start with. And then I agitate it for about a minute. You can't see here, but when I dump it out, there's actually a little bit of a color to the liquid. Uh, it's removing some of the outer coating of the film. Next, I pour in the developer. And I don't start the timer until the developer is completely in the tank. I'll start off with a full minute of inversions. You can use the little uh, agitator rod that's there, but I prefer to do full inversions. That makes sure that the developer gets to all aspects of the film. I then slam the tank down and pull up the lid a little bit to release some bubbles. Next I invert the tank for 10 seconds every minute of development time. Once development is complete, I pour out the developer. And then I actually use cold water as a stop bath or water around the same temperature as the developer. And then I invert the tank for about a minute with the cold water. Next up, I pour in the fixer, and then I follow the same process that I did with the developer, which is to invert it for the first minute or so, and then 10 seconds for every minute of fixing time. While the film is fixing, I'll uh, prepare my photo flow, which is just water and a couple of drops of the photo flow. At the end of the fixing process, I pour the fixer back into the bottle. Uh, this TF4 fixer is reusable for many, many rolls. I then start the final rinse by putting the tank under uh, running water of about the same temperature as the developer. After 10 minutes, I pour the water out and begin the final step, which is to pour in the photo flow. Now this helps to ensure that there aren't like bubbles or residue that are formed when the film is drying. And I usually agitate that for about 30 seconds uh, very slowly so as not to form too many bubbles. After 30 seconds I pour out the photo flow. And now the moment we've all been waiting for... We can pull out the spool and see the fruits of our labor. As you can see, I accidentally left the uh, tape on at the end of the reel, but that's okay. And we're left with good, dense negatives, and uh, from this point on, I'm gonna hang them up and wait for them to dry. Which usually takes about three hours to overnight, depending on how anxious I am to scan them. All right, that's just a basic rundown of my film development process. It's not perfect, it's not necessarily ideal, but it's what works for me. I find film developing to be very relaxing, therapeutic, and, and actually a lot of fun. And I encourage all of you at home to give it a try. It's very simple, there's not a lot of, of gear necessarily that you need. It's not terribly expensive when you consider how much it costs to develop each role uh, over the course of time. It's kind of amazing to know that you can shoot a roll of black and white film, get home, spend about 20 minutes or so developing it, and you can have scans that afternoon. It's not quite as convenient as digital, but it's really amazing to be able to go from the start to the end of that process in the same day, and it's a lot of fun. I hope you all got something out of this. Please be sure to leave me a like, subscribe to my channel, uh, leave me a comment as to what you thought about this video and what you'd like to see in the future. I do plan on doing another video where I show you the scanning and processing of this role so we can see how that turns out, fingers crossed. If you'd like to see my online galleries, check out my website at MatthewArrington.com or follow me on Instagram at MatthewArringtonPhoto to see my latest works and uh, kind of latest updates there. Thank you again for joining me and I'll see you next week.